Happy holidays, everybody. I hope you're doing well, getting ready for Christmas and New Year's and all that stuff, and modeling. Today we're going to talk about chipping. I have this spoon here prepared for it. I've primed it on the one side and the other, and I've gone ahead and painted it. But I'm going to go through and talk about the things that you're going to need for the painting, or for the chipping, rather. We're going to need everything you see in front of you here, and a couple other items that I'm going to show you in a moment. We're going to need some foam, because this is the foam dabbing method of chipping. Uh, this is kind of a lazier way to do it, but uh, it works out pretty good. It's just a little piece of foam there. We're going to need to cut that, so I have a little pair of scissors here. You can cut a few pieces if you want to, if you want to use multiple colors. I cut out two, but I'm only, really only going to use just the one. So, uh, But you can cut out as many as you want for as many different colors as you want. The cool thing about this technique is that you can layer it. And every layer is going to work out. The color I've used for this spoon is German Field Gray, World War II. Got that from a Vallejo Air or Vallejo paint set. I uh, really love those sets. They give you a bunch of different colors all the time. But we're going to need our foam. We're going to need something to hold the foam. I have a little alligator clip here you can see. We're just going to dab it on. That's the technique. So no big deal. We're done with our scissors. So get those and the foam out of the way. I probably should have gotten rid of both pieces of foam. Or the one other piece of foam. But it's okay. We'll need a palette to hold our paints. We'll need something to stir the paints if they're not pre-thinned. And for that... We will need a thinner of some kind. Uh, some Vallejo thinner works. This Createx Colors thinner works. You can find that at Hobby Lobby for not a bunch of money. Uh, if it's Vallejo Air or some sort of airbrush paint, you don't need a thinner at all. They come pre-thinned. So this technique is, is really easy and I'm very excited to show everybody because it works out really good. But our first color that we're going to use is black. I always chip with black first. And I'm going to mix that with model color black. Both of these are Vallejo. Uh, mix that with the model air so I don't need to add any kind of thinner because the Vallejo air is already pre-thinned. I'm just giving it the regular black for a little more, uh, a little more thickness in the paint. And we're going to stir these up just to mix those colors, but it's not going to matter because they're both black, so they'll mix up pretty good. This is where our little coffee straw comes in handy. We're just going to stir it away. If we were combining two colors, you would, you would notice a visible change in the hue of the color or... You know, if you're making a different color, you, you would be able to tell. But with the black on black, you really can't tell. So you're just looking for a consistency. After we've got that mixed up, now we're going to hold our piece of foam with the alligator clip. We're going to dip it in this paint. And this is where the fun starts. Now clearly, we have a ton of paint on this piece of foam here. But that's why we're wearing gloves. Just wipe it off. Wipe off as much of it as you can. You really only want to leave just a teeny tiny little little pattern like this. Now you can you can chip with a brush, but it's a lot of work. Uh, that would probably be later. You know when you're a little more little more advanced. I'm not even at that level yet, so don't worry about it. But the sponge method method or the foam method, this is excellent for beginners. You know you want to get into the weathering game. You want to start chipping. You know hand. Chipping with uh, chipping fluid seems a bit too much or too difficult, and then maybe hand brushing is, is too much. No problem. The foam works excellently. It gives a nice, weathered, beat up, chipped up look to your Gundams, your trucks, your planes, your tanks, whatever you're, whatever you're painting. This little technique adds so much variety to it. And the foam helps by adding that bit of randomness to the pattern. You don't have to worry so much about everything being so uniform. There's, there's so many porous areas in the foam that there's no way for it to be anything but random. So we're going to do this to our heart's content. You can do this as lightly as you want, or you can do this as, as much as you want. You can really get in there and make this thing just look beat up. 
I like to hit, you know, sharp angles, corners, any sort of exposed areas that are likely to contact something and chip that paint away. That's where I really like to hit it. But sometimes I like to get in there and just weather the crap out of this thing. Now we could use two pieces of foam for two different colors. Uh, what I've done here is just flipped it around because we have a whole other end of the foam that we can use there. So no need to waste another piece right now. Although it is easy to come by. So our second color though, we're gonna hit this with is gray. I like to contrast the black and the gray, just thinking that whatever this object is that I'm painting, in real life it would have been hit with a couple different base layers before an actual coat of paint went on just to help it stick and be you know, tough. So I start with the black and then I go to the gray. In this case, USAF medium gray from Vallejo. This is a Vallejo Air. Shake it up a little bit, not too much, no big deal. Pour out just a little bit. You can see I poured out way too much black, that's okay. Uh, when you're new to this, you're gonna end up wasting a bunch of paint. That's, that's just the name of the game here. As you get better and you do this more often, you'll, you'll get a better feel for how much paint to use, what sort of pressure to use, how much of it to wipe off. You know, in the beginning, it's gonna be a rush. So I just wanted to show you you know, just what this looks like from you know, even where I am now, I'm still wasting paint. So it's, it's not a big deal, but the method is what we're going for here. And I just want to show you guys how the method works. We just get in here and dab this on the same way we did with the black and with the gray, we want to focus maybe more on areas that we hit really hard with the black, you know, just to show that that these areas really got tore up somehow, you know, whatever it was environmental damage, you know, maybe it was a poor paint job in the first place and it's just chipping off every time it rains or something like that. You know, you can use your imagine with this. You can go as heavy with this as you did with the black if you want to and just, you know, really get it beefed up looking, no problem. You can do this very, very sparingly. You know, sometimes less is more and it looks awesome either way. But here it is so far, just the where we got here, you can see we're leaving, you know, big chips with that gray too. No problem. No problem. You know, especially if this is a, a vehicle or a Gundam or whatever, something that's seen action, seen use in the field, you know. You you want those to get beat up, especially with the Gundams. I mean, these things are 60 feet tall. So, like, they hit a tree and that's it. There goes some paint. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is, you know, seven minutes and... A new technique, a new tool for your toolbox. I hope you're doing good, and I hope to see this in your future builds. Have a good one.